Hey guys, it's Rogue RMD. Let's go ahead and jump into a trauma chest x-ray. So first thing I do is I zoom in, and the first thing I'm looking for is a pneumothorax. When I'm zoomed in this close, the pneumothorax actually finds me. I don't have to look as hard, so that's partly why I do it. At the same time I'm looking for lucency, I'm also looking for increased density. That would suggest a contusion. I follow the lung down into the costophrenic angle here. There can be a deep sulcus sign in the setting of pneumothorax, so I'm looking for that. I've come into the medial cardiophrenic angle, and I'm looking at the lung pretty much the same way on the left side, coming back up, looking at the left lung apex. Again, looking for pneumothorax. At this point, I zoom out. Now I assess the cardiomediastinal silhouette. I'm looking for suspicious widening of the mediastinum that would indicate a hematoma. I'm also looking at the cardiac silhouette, looking for enlargement, possibly a hemorrhagic pericardial effusion. At this point, I'm ready to look at the osteostructures. I do want to point out on the chest x-ray, you get very good information about the osteostructures, so I always follow a pattern and I try to look for everything. I zoom in quite a bit. I start off looking at the right humerus, coming into the glenohumeral joint, tracing out the scapula, which can definitely be fractured in very high energy trauma. I come into the acromion here, checking the AC joint, and then following the clavicle immediately. Definitely picked up a ton of clavicular fractures in my experience. Doing the same thing on the left side. At this point I start looking at the ribs. I can find the T1 level very easily. It has this characteristic upturned transverse processes. So I follow that out here and here's my first rib coming in medially and anteriorly. And you can notice that it gets harder to follow medially because it's cartilaginous and therefore it doesn't attenuate the x-ray beam. So here's my first rib. So here's my second rib. And I basically just follow out each rib, tracing it along, looking for any evidence of fracture. And you notice that you get a much better view of the posterior rib than you do of the anterior rib. And that's just the way it is. Definitely pick up a lot of fractures here laterally. I'm kind of in the midline involving the posterior ribs. And I come all the way down to the 12th rib, which is floating. Doing the same thing on the left side. Coming back up. Last thing I do is I always look at the vertebral bodies. Now, they might be kind of hard to see, but if you window correctly, you can actually make out the edges, the front, the top and bottom of each vertebral body. I basically run the vertebral column all the way down looking for any height loss or compression fracture. It's something I definitely don't want to miss. Again, if you window, you definitely can get a decent amount of information about each vertebral level. So at this point, I'm basically done. That is my search pattern for looking at a trauma chest x-ray. If you like this video, please go ahead and like it down here or leave a comment or feel free to give me any suggestions on what you'd like to see in future videos. Once again, I'm Sorel Thank you for watching this video.